Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming officially President George W. Bush to the Heritage Foundation. Thanks for the kind introduction. I'm looking forward to working with you for the next 14 months, but you better put on your running shoes because my spirits are high, my energy level is good, and I'm sprinting to the finish line. <laughs> Liberty and free enterprise and democracy and religious freedom. These are values that came under attack on September the 11th, 2001. Our nation was attacked by a brutal enemy that despises freedom. They're at war with America because they hate what they stand for and they understand we stand in their way. We must take the words of the enemy seriously. History teaches us that underestimating the words of evil and ambitious men is a terrible mistake. In the early 1900s, the world ignored the words of Lenin as he laid out his plans to launch a communist revolution in Russia. And the world paid a terrible price. In the 1920s, the world ignored the words of Hitler as he explained his intention to build an Aryan superstate in Germany, take revenge on Europe and eradicate the Jews. And the world paid a terrible price. And the question is, will we listen? America and our coalition partners are listening. We're keeping the pressure on the enemy. We're keeping them on the move. We're fighting them everywhere they make their stand, from the mountains of Afghanistan to the deserts of Iraq to the islands of Southeast Asia and the Horn of Africa. I know that when I discuss the war on terror, some here in Washington, D.C. dismiss it as political rhetoric and attempt to scare people into votes. Unfortunately, on too many issues, some in Congress are behaving as if America is not at war. For example, in a time of war, it is vital for the president to have a full national security team in place. And a key member of that team is the Attorney General. Yet the Senate Judiciary Committee has been holding up his nomination. It's wrong for congressional leaders to make Judge Mukasey's confirmation dependent on his willingness to go on the record about the details of a class classified program he has not been briefed on. Senate leaders must move this nomination out of committee, bring it to the Senate for floor, and confirm this good man. Congress has also failed to act on intelligence legislation that is vital to protect the American people in this war on terror. This summer, Congress passed the Protect America Act. Unfortunately, they made this law effective for only six months. And if Congress doesn't act soon, the law will expire, and the gap in our intelligence will reopen, and the United States of America will be at risk. The full Senate and the House of Representatives need to get, a get pass a good bill and get it to my desk promptly. Congress is also stalling on the emergency war supplemental. Congress should be able to move the supplemental quickly. There's no reason why they're not moving the supplemental. Congress should not go home for the holidays while our men and women in uniform are waiting for the funds they need. Congress also needs to pass the Department of Defense spending bill as well as a funding bill for our nation's veterans. Some in Washington should spend more time responding to the warnings of terrorists like Osama bin Laden and the requests of our commanders on the ground and less time responding to the demands of moveon.org bloggers and code pink protesters. This is no time for Congress to weaken the Department of Justice by denying it a strong and effective leader. It's no time for Congress to weaken our ability to gather vital intelligence from captured terrorists. It's no time for Congress to weaken our ability to intercept information from terrorists about potential attacks on the United States of America. And it's no time for Congress to hold back vital funding for our troops as they fight al-Qaeda terrorists and radicals 
in Afghanistan and Iraq. The lessons of the past have taught us that liberty is transformative. And I believe 50 years from now, an American president will be speaking to Heritage and say, thank God that generation that wrote the first chapter in the 21st century understood the power of freedom to bring the peace we want. Thank you for coming. God bless.